Under the Egg, Chapter 18. You may have figured out by now that Anna Trencher was none other than my next door neighbor, Madame Dumont. I didn't until that very moment, and my grandfather certainly never did. In retrospect, it seems fitting that the very girl Jack hoped to rescue was hiding at arm's reach across that fence, behind that blockaded connecting door, inside that prim, prickly exterior that drove him farther away. They emerged from the war just alike, my grandfather and Anna, each captive in a prison of their own distrust, determined never to leave their fate or freedom in anyone's hands but their own. So was it Providence that brought her to the house right next door? Destiny? A mind-blowing coincidence? Not really, as it turns out. It seemed the house next door wasn't just any boarding house. Jack, after a decade spent searching for Anna Trencher on various refugee lists, made a deal with a European relief agency. They could use 20 Spinney Lane rent-free as a resettlement house for post-war refugees. So long as they were all girls between the ages of 16 and 24, the aged Anna Trencher would be at the time. Seeing as how this request raised a few eyebrows, he agreed never to enter the house or speak to the girls, but to only communicate through the house matron, who was directed to ask each girl if she knew or was Anna Trencher. The plan worked, sort of, because Anna Trencher did walk through the doors of 20 Spinney Lane sometime in the early 1960s, a recently emancipated orphan from war-torn France. It's just that the now-grown Anne-Marie Dumont had no memory of ever being Anna Trencher until she saw the painting. It was in a suitcase, she recalled slowly, her French inflected whispers transporting us from her chintz-ruffled bedroom to the scene of her suffering. We were allowed to bring only one suitcase with us, you see, and my father gave me his, though it was almost as big as me. He pulled out the, how do you say, the lining and sewed the painting inside, and my mother put the clothing all around to protect it. A man will come for you, my father said. He will wear a uniform with lightning on his collar. Give him the suitcase and he will take you out of here. That was in the camp, a crowded, disgusting place, not fit for human beings, but they didn't treat us as human beings, so perhaps it was appropriate in their eyes. Before that, I can still see it, there had been a grand apartment with a lot of lovely things, books, silver, art on every wall, and toys, so many toys, Madame Dumont sighed to think of it. Now we were sleeping 20 to a tiny room, all of us living out of the one suitcase we were allowed. No working toilets, no washroom. We all had lice and the hallways and stairways disgusting with human waste. Madame Dumont shook her head. Ah, but I would have stopped time and made that our eternity if I could because my mother and father were with me there. They took the mothers and fathers away, you see, the children left behind. Can you imagine? She looked from me to Bodie, who had crept in behind me. Children no older than you, watching over hundreds of little ones. The big children said we were going on the trains next. We waited and waited every day for an announcement. And then one day, they called my name, mine alone. There was a man in a uniform like my father described. He said he needed to take me to a different camp. He smiled a lot with teeth so straight and white. He seemed so golden next to my rags. The man signed a few papers, then put his hand on my shoulder and took me out through the front gates. At his car, he took the suitcase from my hands and picked me up and hid me in the trunk under a blanket. We took a long, bumpy drive, and when the man opened the trunk, it was completely dark. We were behind the gates of an enclosed building, a convent, I learned. I had never been inside one before. The man handed some papers to a nun who gave him a sort of blessing. Then he turned and went to his car. He did not look at me again. From that moment, I was Anne DeMont, the name on my false papers. I stayed there, a convent girl now, until I was 18. But Anne Marie, I broke in, my baptismal name. The nuns baptized me, you see, when it was time for the first communion. Otherwise, the girls would know that I was different. What do you know? Goldie had been on the right track. Madame DeMont looked right at me with her shining distant eyes. I don't remember my name, you know, or theirs, my parents. I took a tentative step closer and lowered down to my knees too, as if approaching a strange puppy. Max, I said quietly. Max Trencher. That was your father. I stopped there. The story about Max and Jack's friendship could wait.
Trancher, Madame de Mont echoed my pronunciation, tilting one ear up. Anne, Anna, Trancher, she repeated with a French inflection this time and nodded slowly. Yes, yes, I remember it now. And you remember the painting, Bodie ventured gently from behind me. Madame de Mont released her hold on the canvas slowly, holding it out at arm's length. At the camp, I carried the suitcase with me wherever I went. The other children teased me, accused me of hiding food or even gold. Once some boys took it away and tried to open it, break the lock, but it was a strong, expensive suitcase. The lock had three numbers to dial. Three, one, zero. My birthday, October 3rd. She smiled. It was a hot summer, just like this one. One could not sleep with 20 in a room, so every morning I woke before the sun and went quietly to the window. I would open the suitcase and pull out the thread. No, the stitches of the lining again. Just to let the dawn light the painting inside. Madame de Mont lightly traced the surface with her fingertips. This face became my mother's face. I am ashamed to say that it did not take long before I forgot how she looked. But this one, she looked at me, you see, she still does. With worry and pain and, oh, such an aching love. It was a strange comfort to think that someone would grieve for me, too. Grieve for you, I asked. Of course, Madame Dumont looked at me. I knew I would be dead quite soon, like my parents and like the baby in the painting.